Hey Gavin, it's on your face. I know you want to say it. I'm not going to say it. Come on, you said it the last time and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, but do you remember? We also got stuck and it was such a challenge. But that was the whole point. Fine, fine, I'll say it. The worst kind of weather is the best kind of weather. There, he said it and welcome to Autoka Off-Road Day 2023. Yes, we are back with another round of mucky slushy action and yes, once again, I am eating my words about the weather conditions because oh boy, the rain is really coming down today. In fact, before we even got to the venue, all the SUVs had to cross a bridge that was quickly being swallowed up by a river. Clear of the water crossing, however, we have returned to Learn Off-Road Academy's sprawling facility in Pali, Maharashtra to put a bunch of four-wheel drive SUVs to the test. As always, the test is being curated and supervised by Learn Off-Road's Dr. Tejas Kothari, Asia's only International Four-Wheel Drive Trainers Association certified off-road instructor. But this time, there's a twist. Yes, every year we get so many comments from all of you lovely people out there about why your favourite SUVs and crossovers weren't included. The answer is that we usually put only the most hardcore off-road focused SUVs through our trials. But this year, we've brought along a whole bunch of soft roaders too. The basic requirement of having some form of four-wheel drive still remains. But does that mean you can take them off-roading? Well, stick around and we'll show you how each one holds up. And with that, let's meet the contenders. First up, the Maruti Grand Vitara All Grip. It brings all-wheel drive back to the mid-size SUV segment without breaking the bank. And where there's a Vitara, there must be a high rider. It's only fair, right? And thus, Toyota's mechanically identical equivalent also joins the party. Next up, the local favourite Mahindra's XUV700. It may be a soft roader, but it comes from the same house that gave us some of India's toughest 4x4s. Moving on to the more premium stuff, starting with Hyundai's striking new Tucson. It may look angular and futuristic, but don't let that fool you. Next, from Germany, the Volkswagen Tiguan. Another seemingly docile, luxurious soft-roader, but one that could just have a few tricks up its sleeves. The Škoda Kodiak is much like the Tiguan, just longer and heavier with a longer wheelbase. But just how much of a disadvantage will that be going over the obstacles? One of the cars we couldn't get last year is finally here, the MG Gloucester. But though it's a big ladder frame SUV like the Toyota Fortuner, its four-wheel drive system is a bit different. Off-roading is an intrinsic part of Jeep DNA. Just look at the Wrangler that was here last year. But can its most luxurious offering, the Grand Cherokee, perform just as well? And now, on the really tough stuff and the one you've all been waiting for, the Jimny. It may be small, but it's got the tough hardware to do its grandfather, the Gypsy, proud. And finally, the one and only Toyota Hilux. Not that it has improved itself over decades all around the world, but now that it's finally here, we just had to see that capability in action. So now you know the SUVs, and before Gavin's talking makes the weather any worse, let's get the show off the road. And first things first, we have to drop the tyre pressures to 18 PSI on all the SUVs to widen their contact patch and improve traction off-road. Now obviously the soft roaders with their part-time all-wheel drive, lack of low-range transfer cases and approach and departure angles that are not so great won't be able to handle the serious obstacles the Jimny and Hilux can. So we thought we'd go a bit easy on them. Well, that's what we thought anyway. Tejas, it seems, had other plans. The first obstacle is a trench the SUVs will have to enter and exit from testing their approach, departure and ramp breakover angles, as well as the effectiveness of their all-wheel drive systems as they climb out. And that trench is filling up with water fast.
first car in is the Maruti Grand Vitara. So starting with what I think will be the most basic, but you know, we've been proven wrong in the past. Yeah. As it turns out, I was only partly right because while the Vitara's low 105 horsepower of naturally aspirated petrol power and manual gearbox did take some getting used to, the first fumble was only a small hiccup. Alright, it's a bit tricky. It is. Let the wheel slip a bit. Yeah, slower. Yeah, on the right. Yeah, okay. Next up, the Toyota Highrider, which is mechanically identical to the Grand Vitara, so it should perform exactly the same in this obstacle, right? Well, not this particular car. Here we go. We need to crawl in slowly. This is deeper than you expect. Yeah. <laughs> Just notice that you're going down. It is. Avoiding that breakover. Okay, I'll try and keep the revs high. It's a bit tricky. It needs a lot of clutch slipping. Okay. As it turns out, and as you can probably tell from the stickers, this particular high rider had been to a Toyota off-roading event before it came to us, and as a result, it has seen some abuse. Both the clutch and the tyres are heavily worn down and as a result, it's having a very hard time with this obstacle. But we can give it one more shot. Maybe reverse a bit and attempt again. Mm -mm. Won't do it. Okay, I can smell a lot of clutch. That slipping is not helping. Unfortunately, this car is in too worn down a condition to complete this first obstacle. And with that, we have a very early first DNF. That's unfortunate, but hopefully the next soft roader shares some of the off-roading pedigree of its tougher siblings that participated last year. But first things first with the XUV700, you have to contend with the fiddly Adrenox touchscreen to set it up. Okay, so zoom. Yeah. Which I presume is the fastest of the driving modes. It is. Does it have off-road mode? I feel like maybe it does. After that small faff, we were finally on our way. Holding the line nicely. Very strong brakes. Oh. Which is good, I guess. I think we need a little more momentum. Okay, we can do this. It's not enough though, with the overly intrusive traction control cutting power on the crucial exit line and a long front overhang causing the bumper to scrape. Another one bites the muck and the XUV2 has to be towed out. This isn't looking good for the soft roaders. Hopefully the next SUV fares better. So it automatically has engaged the downhill descent control. It's very controlled. Yep. So far, so good. Here comes the climb. Let's see. I think it's gonna make it and... Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> that was surprisingly fuss free. The Tucson confidently entered and exited the pit with little struggle, not even requiring speed or momentum like the SUVs before it. Well done, Tucson. Well, well done. done. Well done. The VW Tiguan is next, and on paper at least, it should be at least a match for the Tucson. It's got an off-road and an off-road expert. Oh, expert driving profile. So. Which means, is the car the expert or are you the expert? I hope it's the car. <laughs> Let's hope it's the car. Kill descent. Being a bit aggressive here. However, though it handled the descent well, the off-road export mode wasn't enough to make a clean exit. Struggling for grip, the Tiguan spins its wheels wildly, with TCS again cutting in at just the wrong time. A few more tries and in the process, the VW tears up half the muddy ramp beneath it. It's simply not going to make it and it too has to back out. That doesn't bode well for the Škoda Kodiak, which has similar mechanicals to the Volkswagen and on the surface seems even more out of its depth thanks to its additional length, weight and wheelbase. 
This is a long car with a long wheelbase. Yep, we know at the breakover, which wasn't bad. Okay, pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I like the Volkswagen, very aggressive on the hill descent control. There's a slight struggle on the upslope as the front biased all wheel drive system struggles with all the weight hanging over the back. Come on, come on, let's go down to the hard part. I think our best shot is just to give it a solid fruitful. Phew, that was a bit nerve wracking. But the good news is, all the remaining cars have some amount of toughness built into them. Like our next contender, the Gargantuan Gloucester. Interesting thing about the MG Gloucester, although it looks big and tough and is technically a ladder yeah. frame SUV just like the Fortuner and the old Endeavour, it's all wheel drive. It's got the height, that's for sure. Yeah, clearance and is not an issue. Up. <laughs> ah, right. There you go, Gloucester. The Gloucester's size alone gives you the confidence to plough through any terrain, but even without a proper low-range gearbox, its tough chassis, strong torque and rear-biased four-wheel drive system push it out of the obstacle with no fuss. Next up is the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is this year's calm, dignified and sophisticated player. It's quite wide. This is a Jeep, so even though it's the most luxurious one, it's got pedigree. It certainly did, because even though we were taking it slow, the Cherokee simply waltzed out of the pit, almost shaming the others who struggled before it. Keep going, keep going, keep going! Yeah, there we go. It's just unbelievable how Jeeps really do it. Hopping out of the Titanic Jeep and into the tiny and basic Jimny, it momentarily feels like we've been knocked back to the bottom of the food chain. Off-roaders are better when they're bigger, right? Not quite. It's been a long time coming and I have been looking forward to it. This is the first time I'm ever driving a chimney. Wow. Forget on-road, off-road, nothing. It's the first time I'm ever being in uh, this chimney at least. I've but driven this and I don't want to ruin it for you. I'll let you find out for yourself. It's freaky that this car is so small, but it doesn't really. It, gi it gives you a pretty big car feel because of the square shape. Yeah. But it's actually tiny, and that comes through in the width. Exactly. Look at the track. It's it's really narrow. <laughs> yeah. Now to look at it in perspective of say the Hilux, suddenly this car feels so small. The bantamweight Jimny scrabbles through like a scalded cat, almost leaping out at the other end. Yeah, there we go. And like... Finally, it's the Toyota Hilux. Time to see what the fuss has been about. We'll stop and shift it to... four low. Mm -hmm. And there it is, it's engaged. It's got a diff lock as well, which is engaged. But there's something about the Hilux which literally gives you so much more confidence to you know even attempt obstacles like this they don't call it the invincible for nothing <laughs> absolutely literally crawling its way out of it 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 did it like it's absolutely nothing uh, not even a i was waiting for a bit of spin or a bit of hesitation but frankly yep Nothing. The next duo of obstacles is a rocky path followed by what Tejas and his crew affectionately call the Devil's Hump. The first one looks innocent enough, but in reality, some of the protruding rocks can really test ground clearance if you're not careful, as we'll find out later. The Devil's Hump is a huge mound that you have to cross at an angle. 
pausing at the top as you balance on two wheels and see if the four wheel drive system sends power to the wheels that need it. We are extra careful over the rocks in the Grand Vitara which has among the softest suspension setups of all the SUVs here today. It gets across with little issue and going over the hump, Suzuki's all grip select all wheel drive system takes charge quickly and quietly to get the SUV across smoothly. With no serious strain on the tyres or the clutch, this should be just as easy in the high rider. It really feels like a game of chance because you want to remember where, where the high point is. Exactly. Pun intended. Yup, no fuss at all. But will the second part be just as easy? But it's basically testing how your four-wheel drive system handles wheels being off the ground. Not bad, Toyota. Not bad at all. Smoothly done. So the High Rider redeemed itself after obstacle 1, so can the XUV700 do the same? The Rock Crawl, which I think should be pretty good in a tough old Mahindra. Yup, it really shows its strong lineage over the rocky stretch, with a solid feel through the steering as each of its wheels navigates the obstacle. And it's a similar story with the hump. This one I find most fascinating because you don't realise just what it's doing until you're yeah. over the edge. And one wheel is in the air. Uh, oh. Easy. Very. The Tucson aced the first obstacle, but will it be as impressive on the rock crawl? I think it's nice and quiet. You just he hear the engine at times when you rev it, but otherwise, it's pretty comfortable in the Tucson. Weirdly, it's quieter out here than it was on the highway where there was quite a bit of suspension noise. Ah. <laughs> but surprisingly, none of that out here on an off-road course. The clearance proves to be more than ample and we move over to the hump. Okay, let's pause here and you can hear the lock kicking in. Ah. Nicely done. So that's two for two in the Tucson. And now the Tiguan. So this is a nice test of clearance and how it deals with sort of sharper bumps, which is to say not with any problem at all. Yeah, and I also like the ride on the <laughs> rock crawl in the Tiguan. Will we there we go, crest it? Oh, oh, okay, that was a bit undramatic and effortless. <laughs> I was expecting a bit more drama, but uh, German efficiency, I suppose. We're a little more concerned for the mechanically identical but slightly larger Skoda. Shim scrape, that's all. Oh, and it didn't. Oh, this is interesting because it's a long wheelbase. Not quite as undramatic as the Volkswagen, but I guess that's more down to this car size. Yep. Up next, the big MG Gloucester, and here's where we get overconfident. I can go straight over in this one, no? Yeah, you can. You can. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Remember when I said earlier that we'd find out later how not innocent this rock crawl is? Well... Yeah, that's where we go over to the right. Another long wheelbase car over this thing. Stop at the crest. Oh, look at that. Flat and level, but two wheels are in the air. Yeah. And... You barely make out anything. But now, oh. Little bit of a... Little bit of a grazer on the long wheelbase there, but again, this car has so much ground clearance that... Hardly tickled it. Huge dimensions and ample ground clearance are standard on the Jeep Grand Cherokee 2, 
but the level of body control and isolation in here is just on another level. And remember, unlike some other big SUVs in its class, this one doesn't have air suspension. going down but all in comfort all so smooth it's just amazing the jimny takes these two obstacles like a normal suv would take a pothole and a speed breaker however with its narrow track tall suspension and edge to edge wheelbase the jimny tends to skip over the smaller rocks and again everything is so relatively small here yeah, not just the size of the car but even the wheels and tires as they go over those bumps you yeah. can feel it they're, they're not as big as some of the larger uh, SUVs we've been driving today the relative lack of size is felt over the hump too where the weight transfer as we tip over is barely felt this is interesting cuz it's tiny ah the lights are flashing <laughs> but it, it's just so small <laughs> Something this small with this much ground clearance—it's an unusual feeling. Yeah. And at the other end of the size scale, the Hilux. Do you think anybody in India has bought a Toyota Hilux and used it for utilitarian reasons? I don't think so. Do they carry stuff? No, probably just for things like this. And true to all pickup trucks, with an empty bed and no weight over the rear wheels. The leaf sprung Hilux gets really bouncy at the rear if you're not careful. This, this should feel like a rumble strip for this car to be honest, right? Absolutely. Let's see. And the sheer size of this thing, it's it's so nice. I think I like big cars. <laughs> and you cannot lie. <laughs> I, and I can. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> All right now attempting the big hump which suddenly doesn't appear to be very big in this car it's literally like a small speed breaker Oh my gosh <laughs> it, it it's like a joke The third obstacle didn't seem to be much when we saw it earlier in the day. It's a hill, you drive up it and come down the other side. It sounds simple enough, but now as the rain has battered down for hours non-stop, it is considerably more daunting. For one, it's much steeper than it looks, so it has to be attacked with momentum at a slight angle to make it over properly. Moreover, it's a blind crest at the top followed immediately by a left turn and thanks to the rain, the surface is about as grippy as oil poured on smooth plastic. Going too fast or even braking too hard could mean a free fall down the wrong side of the hill. And since we are running out of precious time and conditions are only getting worse, each of us is going to do this solo. And I'm going to start with the Grand Vitara. pretty intense it sort of bogged in the second gear but quick reaction and shifting back to the first gear really helped and we made it out easy the relatively lightweight means changing directions after the crest is easy but we're now aware of how tricky this obstacle really is The gremlins continue in the Toyota Highrider as the all-wheel drive system now refuses to lock. We put it in snow mode and hope for the best as we bolt up the hill, remembering the short shift trick. Come on, 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 come on. No. Bad for a car that I think is only two wheel drive. <laughs> the lack of tire tread is apparent especially as we brake after the crest for the left-hander. It's a little hairier than in the Maruti for sure. 
And now we're in the XUV700 on the slippery incline. Let's see how this one fares. Not bad so far, we are almost up at the crest. A little slipping and sliding, but pretty smooth. Perhaps zoom mode was a little too aggressive for this particular obstacle, as it felt like the torque was coming in too strong, but nothing a quick reaction could not save. Up next, the old smooth operator itself. Tucson, it impressed us before. Let's see if it can do it again. I've got it in mud mode. Again, a lot of torque coming in. Clear, good little soft suspension. And surprisingly little drama uh, for an engine with quite a bit of power and torque. What I don't think is, relatively speaking, that heavy a car. Uh, I think the electronics came in just to smooth the process over a little bit but yeah really 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 surprised and impressed uh, with the Tucson and its performance today <laughs> okay now next up is the Volkswagen let's see how this does it well started off nice and easy enough grunt almost walk in the park. The Tiguan also impressed on this run with strong power delivery and rock solid stability. Credit must also go to the DSG gearbox for its quick and crucially uninterrupted shifts making for a smooth climb. The Kodiak doesn't have as easy a time and it's clearly the greater weight that's playing spoil sport. And here we go. Come on big car. See the lack of traction. The course has been degraded considerably since we started and now it's really putting these all-wheel drive systems to the test I felt it losing grip and engaging the four-wheel drive about halfway up that slope the big weight of this gigantic SUV started to fight with the forces of gravity to be honest even heavier is the Gloucester and unfortunately that came into play as it doesn't make it up in the first go. And it's already slipping and sliding. Okay, let's go. Let's go Gloucester. It's certainly not lacking in power and as it turns out, all it needs is a little bit more finesse to manage all the bulk better. Powering up and there is so much grunt easy does it by the time the grand cherokee is up the weather has clearly turned this obstacle from beginner to advanced the course has been turned into absolute slush wow lots of corrections having to be made here i wasn't afraid <laughs> for all its capability and effortlessness i will say that this car feels heavy it feels its size it feels its weight but if you're in the market for this kind of five-seat luxury SUV, I don't think any of the others, save for maybe a Land Rover, which is a lot more expensive, let me just tell you, uh, can, can do some of the things that this thing can do. So, in good hands. Any doubts about the Jimny's lack of power were laid to rest once and for all on the slope. And here we go! It built momentum and held it. And the 4-speed automatic didn't skip a beat on the way up. It's so light, so nimble. And of course, working to its advantage, it literally climbs everywhere like a mountain goat. The Toyota Hilux feels like the perfect storm in this perfect storm. With the best visibility, solid 420 newton meters of torque, tough chassis, and able 4x4 guts. I'm confident, but you know, it's, a, it's quite light on the rear. And man, this thing is powerful! Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! That was not just easy. That felt all-encompassing in a way even the Jeep Grand Cherokee did not. It also feels every bit the utility vehicle that it is with its ladder chassis and 
no weight over the back it's bouncing all over the place it bounced from side to side sort of leaving the track but otherwise what a machine In fact, the capability gap between the soft roaders and the Jimny and the Hilux is so vast, it seemed almost unfair to bore these two with this watered down obstacle course, figuratively and literally. It was only right to give them one slightly harder test. It's time then to welcome back the side slope test, which makes a return from last year and is something we wouldn't even risk attempting. with the softer SUVs it forces the vehicle to lean at about 30 degrees and then pull itself out of a pit and just for fun the field outside the pit was also a slippery hillside so exit too fast and it's game over uh obviously the jimny has a bit of a narrow track which might be a disadvantage but also it is very lightweight which might work in its favor nice and easy so far i mean the angle from here maybe you can't make out on the screen but it is pretty crazy i can see the ground very close and it is slipping and sliding but all under control nothing too scary you're still crawling out and it is just amazing how this thing just crawls out of such such tricky situations it's amazing it's a lot of fun Here's where the length and mass are truly not on the Hilux's side. So this is the one of the trickier obstacles for the Hilux, of course, because it's a tough old thing. I'm trying to keep it on a side slope, if you can tell by the way I'm facing. I will need to use all that torque and a good dose of speed to muscle my way out, because if not, this heavy truck will get stuck at the very end of the pit. Yourself out, you big truck. Side slope challenge, not as easy as it looks for sure. Now that felt real. challenging technical and just a little bit tense it's the sort of thing you get into recreational off roading for but it's also the reason why it's not for everybody some may find the slow pace boring while others may find the repeated trial and error frustrating but for those who are committed there's nothing like perfecting the technique in a vehicle that's designed or modified to do it and there are now more than enough SUVs and trucks on the market designed just for this thing But what about the ones that aren't the soft roaders? We challenged them a bit more than we originally planned to and most of them came out shining. Dirty, but shining all the same. Would we recommend taking them on a serious off-roading challenge? Absolutely not. But will they get you out of a mucky field if you get yourself stuck? You bet. So, do we have a winner? Sure. The Jimny and the Hilux were in a different league, but that was to be expected. The soft roaders all did okay given the challenging conditions and obstacles. But if there was one surprise, it was the Hyundai Tucson. With its huge reserves of torque, fast-acting all-wheel drive system, and surprisingly effective off-road modes, it is the one that went over and above what is expected of the average all-wheel drive family crossover. There's much debate about whether car makers should even bother offering all-wheel drive in their family or luxury SUVs, since when it's an option, most people tend to skip it. Well, as we proved today, there's a time and place for everything. And even if you're only slightly adventurous, four-wheel drive might just make all the difference.